so all the data must be related to each other means so for example my income your expenditure is there any relation my income your expenditure is there any relation hello i'm asking to you anyone one of the participant can respond my income your expenditure is there any relation no sir no no yes ob obviously it is a no such relation is there but whatever data you have to use there must be a relation established must be there for example your experience your salary so your the moment your experience increases your salary also increases yes or no similarly yes. your sal your salary and your expenditure your salary increases your expenditure also increases are getting or not so there must be a some relation between the data point you have to compute so how to compute so in general how to do it in general let me tell you in general how to do it for example suppose i define a set of input xp sort of a suppose i compute here x1 is the input at time t i'll get y1 output at the time t so this t this t may be very i have no objection i have no problem at all what i want to say i'm given the input at time t i get the output at time another time y1 at t similarly i've given the x2 at given time x2 input i get the y right so if it is a linear time invariant if and only if if there is a constant called the alpha 1 x1 of t plus alpha 2 x2 of t is equal to alpha 1 of y1 of t alpha 1 of y1 of t plus alpha 2 y2 of t the if this equations is holds good then we call the time invariant is it not time invariant the moment i am given uh, one example you will be easily understood suppose this equation suppose this equation i got it the this equation is nothing but y is equal to mx plus t how to do it for example x1 is nothing but the y1 is nothing but m x1 plus c1 or c we can call c and the c is a constant is zero we can call it m x1 similarly x2 y2 is equal to m x2 plus c2 is constant we can call the m x2 the moment i add this one x1 plus x2 then we will get here m into x1 plus x2 plus c and the moment is this is nothing but the mx1 plus mx2 and what is mx1 so this mx1 is nothing but your y1 because you see mx1 and this is nothing but your y2 so we can got it here from this data from this data we will get it here x1 plus x2 is is nothing but y1 plus y2. right 
so in this is called the linear time invariant data similarly the linear shift invariant also we can compute if your data points are looks like then in this case what happen this is not equal to x1 plus x2 is equal to y1 plus y2 because the slope value may be changes now <coughs> come to cnn architecture as i already told you the cnn architecture basically used for the convolution of neural network and the output of the cnn will be the only gives the reduced feature map which is the optimal feature map and this optimal feature map may be further used to the decision making as a input to the neural network so the input is given here so from this figure you just look at the figure here just look at the figure this one so this is called the cnn work right <coughs> the C cnn work this fully connected layer will providing to the neural network and this neural network will define belongs to which class the images is there you input the images then by using the convolutions then by using the nonlinearity then using the pulling i am given individual what is the meaning of convolution nonlinearity pulling details this is called the 50% so what you will get this is called the optimal feature input this optimal feature input will be input to the any fully connected neural network and you will get what exactly the output for example i have one uh, three dimension of image the color image is there right and the color images are represented as a height width and the depth the height width and the depth right so it represents the rgb and a filter of corners that will be convoluted with uh, rgb image could be 3d So remember one thing you may be doubt so what is mean by filter and corner so what is the difference between corner and filter both are same in 2d array is called the corner in 3d we call the filter otherwise same both everything is same corner and filters are the same but this is nothing but two dimensional data as i already told you binary images if the color images that is called the generally you can call the filters right so this is the my input uh, images are there so these images i extract the feature of the particular images i'll put a story here i'll extract the images i stores here so this is nothing but the kernels that to be convolved to rgb in 3d the multiple kernels also there so this is nothing but the multiple kernels so this is the one kernels this is called the one kernels right the many kernels may be used many kernels you may be used so so that depends upon uh, depends upon you how many number of kernels you can use as per your uh, problem specifications absolutely no problem but uh, the moment you extract the kernel information you will store in that particular kernel and here the instruction will extract and store in a particular kernel here the standing instruction store in a particular kernel so number of kernel that may be all feature maps obtained from the distance kernel and stack the final output of that particular layer so this is the 3d convolutions so visualizations as i mentioned and uh, suppose in 3d convolution the size is equal to suppose 32 into 32 into 3 because you what happen that 32 image size is equal to 32 into 32 the number of kernel is 3 so what happen here this is called the kernel images so from this images i extract the images or the data I can can store this value. Now here, if the ten number of kernels are there, so each are the extraction data. But total number of features may be equal to thirty-two into thirty-two into ten. Why thirty-two into ten? Because this ten is nothing but the how many number of kernels? How many number of kernels? So each information is equal thirty-two into thirty-two. So this is the called the future space. Future space. This is called the future space. Now. by using nonlinearity so this is the 
by using convolution now come to non nullity in this non nullity what will do you have to identify whether is given is greater than 1 or less than 1 if is greater than 1 then come to the one layer is not greater than one you discard it you not consider so say linear format i will i explain you how it is work then by using this convolution neural network the small example i am mentioned here from this figure if you identify how many boards are there whether it is board or not so by using this uh, convolution neural network in the l function and pooling and fully connected so this is the neural network you have to input the data see the probability is 94% Having both, that means what are the looking the figure inside the C figure, the probability says that 94% chances these are the both. So of course these are the both. Now coming to one of the beautiful example, I'll coming to this later. So let me explain this one. You see the very beautiful space koala, one of the animal generally looking in Africa. So this koala having I have to classify whether it is actually koala picture or some other. Animal speaks. I see the beautiful nose and the eyes and the ear, and this is called the face. This is called the body part, and this is the hand. I have to extract each image. So what will do? First of all, the image size is equal to one nine two zero into one zero eight zero into. So these are the C one pixel information you have to provide. So these images we are provide neural network. That means the first neuron, first layer of neurons is equal to six million. Suppose because I have to provide all the input data. Suppose I consider the hidden layer. Suppose the consider the hidden layer, and the hidden layer will be another you know, four four million. The weight will be between the input the hidden layer because six million is each having hidden layer. so must be weight will multiply so this 24 million of data if you use any type of neural network so you will be shock so you will wait for uh, one day or two day like that so what will do why you are putting this type of input data to the neural network why not use the feature map of the neural network as a classification output to particular image whether is nose or whether is ear or is eye or is face or leg or not so what will do here the koala eyes i am given the input layer then you will find mapping with this original then is yes then what happened the eye is yes nose is yes ear is yes then you join this three yes this is a koala figure or similar the body part also you can compute let me consider this one suppose i consider the eye part right suppose i consider the eye so what will do i extract the information i put all the image part having 1 and minus 1 so these are the my input data is there then what will do i compute the filter so how to uh, define the filter size or kernel size the formula is there so you have to calculate the kernel size the formula says that w minus k plus 2p by s plus 1 so this w means input volume this is called the input volume and k is called the kernel size and p is called the padding i'll tell you what is padding and s is called the s is called the side side so by providing this information you will get the kernel size suppose i define the kernel is equal to like like this one this is my kernel right and remember the kernel for eye is different kernel for nose is different kernel for face is different kernel for hand is different So what will do? I multiply by this one. One into minus one into one minus one. Then one into one is one. Then one into one into one. So I just like a multiply by this. 
Then I divide by 9. Why 9? Because the 9 number of input parameters are there. I divide by 9. So this is equal to 0 point minus 0 0.1. I put here 0 0.1 minus 1. Simple. Then what happened next time? You just slide this C by C to up to this direction. The shifting one column to the right. Then again you multiply same thing. Then you will get 1. Again you multiply the shifting side you get the 1. So you will get maximum 3 because if you go to this side, so here no data is there, no data is there, right? So you've got the, in this way, I extract all the data by multiply by uh, here, all the filter data, I got this table. And after getting this table, you come to this picture, I already told you by nonlinearity. In nonlinearity, what will do? You find the each value is greater than 1 or not. If you greater than 1, I will greater than equal to 1, I put 1 and rest of the 0. So minus 0 0.11 is not greater than 1, so I will put 0, is ReLU method, right? Here second one is 1, 1 is greater than equal to 1, yes, 1, so rest all are 0, I can put. Similarly, the we will get the feature map, this is called the feature map, and we will get uh, all type of uh, feature map by considering here nodes. So node is a feature map and uh, ear is feature map and uh, another eye, everything will get the feature map. So once you get the this uh, hand detector, so hand means this is the hand, hand detector, you will make it is one, so make it is one, then you can, what will do? You just contaminated with your data, the eye features, what you optimal feature you get it, the nose feature, what you optimal nose feature you get it and by using ear piece. The moment you combine the nose, eyes and ear is all of your Sukwala, now yes, then I join this figure, you will get the output by using feature analysis. Now coming to what exactly mean the uh, spooling. The spooling basically what happen in pooling method, what are the data is here? That data is the size is not changing, remember, size is not changing, the huge amount of size are also to reduce the features of the size, you need the pooling. How to do it? Suppose I extract the input data, I got the 3, 8 and 2, 9. Whichever is the highest, the max pooling I'm using, suppose the 9. Similarly, I consider the this data. 5, 6 and 5, 3. That's got the 6. Then 4, 4, 1, 1. You get the 4. Then 6, 8, 2, 1. Maximum is 8. Now you just see, the 32, 32 by 10, the size of the data, we considered the pooling 16 into 16 into 10. So in this way, the dimensionality of the data will be reduced without information, without varying the other vectors. By using 2 by 2 sign, we can go the side is equal to, similarly 4 by 4, you can put side is equal to 4, and 6 by 6, and side is, that depends upon. So by using max pool method, we can find out the other method. And other method also there, we can call the a minimum. So what is the mean of this one? Mean of this one means 3 plus 2 plus 8 plus 9 divided by 4. That we can also do, no problem. You will have 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3 divided by 4, you make this. So that also another type of, of pooling method, also be no problem. That is called the average pooling method. Similarly, some also. 3, 2, 8, 9, 5, 14 is 22. Instead of 9, you make it 22. Here also 5 to 10, here 16, here 19. You make it 19. This one you make it 19. So here also you can put 17. And here also you can 10. So this is nothing but the sum pulling. Similarly, the moment you compute here, just look at here. I am just putting the figure as input. Then convolution neural network, then I apply the pooling method. And this pooling method, convolution neural network, the LLU method you apply by using nonlinearity function. Then again, you are pulling up to this, we call the feature extraction. Remember, this is the beauty of CNN. I am not getting the classification as of now. By using the feature extraction, what you will get the output? That output will be provided to the neural network and neural network only simple get the 
what should the my output whether is koala or not a koala right so in this way this is called the neural network any neural network you can put this is called this is called the your cnn this is called the cnn the output of the cnn is the neural network. now as I, the briefly as i told you the i compute here the convolutions then the relu and the pooling method then convolution and the connection and sparsity reduced overfitting convolution of pooling i give the location of invariant feature detection and parameter sharing is that also possible in case of convolution the relu method what i can introduce into nonlinearity and speed up the training and faster to the compute method and pooling method what will do reduce the dimension of the computation and reduce the overfitting overfitting means before a maturation you before a conclusion you got the maturation so that is called the overfitting that makes the model tolerance toward the small distance the variance so these are the different type of stage in the convolution neural network now coming to my uh, work by using uh, convolution neural network we have used and uh, that is called the deep uh, learning neural network we can call the optimal deep learning neural network we have used and uh, this paper was published in 2018 uh, around 150 citation is up now the paper was published in uh, early 2019 this is my student work so paper also i share with you you can uh, collect from the, your organizations so let me explain how it work <coughs> this is called the <coughs> long images right any doubt please ask me in human lungs <coughs> we divide into two parts left and right and each part having two section you just look at here the lower and the upper section you might be hard now in covid time that people are living what is hr ct score high resolution computer graphics score they are saying that uh, 10 by 25 you might be hard in this covid time give a long uh, x ray or long x ray there so how to do what is 25 each lobe right the upper lobe and the uh, upper lobe and lower lobe so these total sections and divide by 25 parts so this is five parts each having also divide 5 so total is equal to this is called the long lower part middle part and the upper part here is called the upper part and lower part so total is equal to 5 right yes or no total is equal to 5 so out of 5 each having also divided into 5 parts each of them divided into 5 parts so total is equal to 25 so that's why it's called the 25 if your hr ct score is 10 by 25 that means 10 different parts are affected out of 25 that's why the world health organization saying that if your hr ct score or uh, score is greater than 10 by 25 and less than 15 by 25 then is your moderator state or you are the moderator state if it is greater than 15 by 25 that means you are in critical condition you are in the critical condition then you start the proning state you have to sleep the proning state the moment you sleep proning state what happen this long the left hand side longs will be relaxed the moment you relax what happen the solid semi solid part of the longs will be down so that's why this is the story of the hrcd basically now we have used the uh, computer tomography images and you use the linear descriptive analysis we are not using the principal component analysis we are using the linear descriptive analysis as well as the uh, deep auto encoder also use then the dimensional feature reduction by use the ldr techniques the linear descriptive reduction technique and the data we have considered the 32 to 48 years we have collected the data from apollo delhi 
ఎయిమ్స్ ఢిల్లీ అండ్ అప్పులో హైదరాబాద్ అండ్ అప్పులో ఉమెన్స్ అండ్ సెవెంటీ ఎయిట్ మేల్ పర్సన్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ అండ్ ట్వంటీ టూ ఫిమేల్ పర్సన్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ దెన్ ద రిజల్ట్స్ షో దాట్ ద ప్రపోజల్ అవర్ రిజల్ట్స్ షో దాట్ ద ప్రపోజల్ క్లాసిఫికేషన్ ఆఫ్ ద అల్గోరిజం ఆర్ సెన్సిటివిటీ నైంటీ సిక్స్ పర్సెంట్ అండ్ ఎక్యురసీ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు నైంటీ ఫోర్ పాయింట్ ఫైవ్ సిక్స్ పర్సెంట్ సో సిస్టమ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇండివిజువల్ ఆఫ్ డయాగ్నసిస్ ఎర్లీ స్టేజ్ అండ్ సిక్నెస్ ఆర్ ఇరిటబుల్ and 99.80 percent are affected during the prolonged smoking habit now the uh, what is the symptoms are there symptoms of prolonged cough means you have cough from last 6 months or 7 months like that which actually don't know in the mucus and weight loss gradually and the actual cause also don't know what the causes of the cancer and mycoplasm pneumonia may be the develop the blood protein so the one of the may be the region and uh, this also happening due to grain dust of the fleming and silica dust and some drugs can be giving a bio maxin and imidacloprid and pitulus then genetic may be 2% suppose your father or mother or their insistent having the cancer and new chances may be cancer that you know, about 2% and how to do confirmation test you go for the chest x ray if they are unable to do in chest x ray then immediately go for the hrcg scan right then you can high resolution ct images ct scan also you can use the otherwise you can put the lft and the degree of the cancer you can get it by using the long biopsy the limitation of the classifier we are using the many classifiers then by using support vector machine ann and there the limitation of what we getting from our result now come to the experimental setup how we have did as of now from this experiment so this is the experimental setup and uh, in experimental setup what happen in experimental setup what happen so first of all we are using the filter technique so data all filter constructed by nance phases then we will extract the features and we have extract the feature in a three way one is called the histogram features one is the texture features one is the wavelet based features then after that feature extraction technique what will do we have to feature reduction technique by use the linear discriminant analysis then after that we provide the data to the neural network for classification of whether it is a cancer or not cancer and this method we have applied by using the deep belief neural network and the mold event basing neural network so what are the uh, graphical representation here here the clinical differences are represented here so these are the database we are considered the input data now here what happened the pre processing are there here the pre processing filters are noise are there noise are removed by any filter techniques then use the constructed images after constructed images we use the feature extraction a uh, feature extraction i passes to the ldm method then after that use the classifier odnn so this is called the optimal deep neural network techniques and you remember here what are the data you are considering to input to the classifier that must be the reduced feature one because this is up to call the convolutions again i am telling you the input to the classifier don't input to the total data set because the 24 millions of data you take the huge huge time and sometime maybe the data may be your overfitting so what will do you have to always supply the reduced feature map data then this reduced feature map data will summing the uh nominal normal and the meaning non and the money normal you just compare with the whether cancer or not and this is the two type of tissues we will find it out is the uh, separated or affected by the near neighbor tissue and another is not affected by the neighbor tissue by using the case of the uh, test images this is i already told you the linear discriminant analysis uh, in a uh, by eigen vector is a experiment same to you have to find instead of find the eigen vector you can find the omega what's the omega and omega 2 where your data points are diverted and which direction that will find out now coming to this reduced feature what happened in this case 
after getting this optimal neural network i am going to explain how odn and is used this is called the optimal neural network and the optimal is what is the input so input is feature reduced right the input layer is equal to reduce the feature you just look at here so my input is equal to this input is nothing but the reduce the feature map so reduce the feature map so you inputted here now this is the output of this is equal to your whether is a cancer or not that we have to find out and the hidden layer we are considering so as a five hidden layer then it belongs to which class whether the malignant or normal or benign that we have to find out and this is the my structural representation how you can say that the evolve in the fitness function and find the worst solution and update the mass function function in the fitness value of the each attribute then you can find the select random value using the probability that so using a hidden layer we can add output will get it on the basis of which layer of the data points are there now coming to this uh, the data bus description so i already told you these are the images are there so out of image so we can put a question how to input the images input in the sense in the sense you have to put the feature of the input images that's all the moment you fit the input images you are in considering as a 25k fold for validation so what is k fold for validation for example i have a data set 100 right i have a data set 100 how many data set 100 data set. 100 set data set 100 right so i divide into 10 data set so 1 to 10 11 to 20 21 to 30 similarly last one is equal to 91 to 100 right so these are the 10 data 100 data sets are there right So total number of hundred data set are divided into ten each category, right? So what will do? So it, this is called the k is equal to ten. That means ten cross fold validation. Similarly, this also total data set will divide thirty. That is called the thirty cross validation. So this k is equal to ten. So I divide ten. So what will do? First of all, first one to ten becomes training. and this 11 to 100 become testing the first phases second time what happen this 1 to 21 again 21 to 80 that means on 10 respect to 90 20 respect to 80 30 respect to 70 40 respect to 60 in this way you go for training and testing like that the so moment you get is that 25k cross fold validation will get the accuracy is equal to 8.85 but the maximum highest accuracy you will get it here in a k validation is equal to 96.5 so this is the way you can go on by using sensitivity and specificity you know might be sensitivity specificity and accuracy and this way you can go on do it one by one We will get it here by using the ODNN optimal deep neural network. You just look at here, little bit the highest uh, 94%. Uh, I think it is 96. Yes, 96% is the accuracy as compared to the other neural network like multi-layer um, neural propagation and radial based function. Then KNN and like that other methods are there. so here you can call here the output is a malignant and the normal and benign so these are the accuracy you can identify so what do you conclude from me here the data we have concluded that in our research we have found that our method is the for the recognize as a normal and abnormal long images according to the experimental outcomes of our study the proposed technique is quite effective as compared to the other classification techniques for specifically human lung images in terms of accuracy in terms of the accuracy and the sensitivity specificity with the value is given and the accuracy level is clearly evidence that the proposed algorithm is deeply proficient to recognize the cancer affected part of the ct images and the classification performance of this investigations Are demonstrated the advantage of this strategy. It is also a speedy sampling to operate. Am I audible? 
Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. And now you are not audible, I think. Okay, I think uh, he has got disconnected. Uh, we will wait for a few minutes for him to join back. Okay. So we'll just uh, wait for a few minutes for him to join. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Now you are audible, sir. I'll I'll I make I'll, it again. Now um, yeah. uh, now now screen visible, right? My screen uh, visible? No, sir. No, sir. Not shared. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Now now visible, right? It's loaded. No, sir. He's loading. Yes. Now, now visible, tell me. Hello. Still it is loading, I think. Sir. Yes, the heavy rains are going on. Sir. I think. Uh, now ah, visible, sir. right? Yes, sir. Visible. Okay, okay. So due to, uh, sorry for disturbance, uh, network issues. Because, okay. So, uh, in this uh, deep neural net RDNL, so the highest accuracy uh, in the story. So, as I already told you, the classification performance of this invitation of the demonstration or advantage of the strategy. And it also has pretty simply operate the non invasive of the cheap and the future work we have compute in that uh, mentioned in our paper. We will be used the uh, high doses of the CT long images. And the optimal feature selection may be um, further study with the multiple classifier consider the cancer detection uh, process. So in this way, you can find out we have to consider the city images having the uh, two Tesla images, or the machine having the two Tesla or 1.5 Tesla. If you use the machine having two Tesla machine, so it will be clarity will be more. So it will be get the more feature rather than the uh, getting the simple data plus images. Right? And uh, the nodals you can find out like the radiology also provide the data set. So these are the small, small person we can identify. These are the small affected persons where 
we can find the there may be a cancer detection or not. So this is the classifier comparison analysis, and this is the my accuracy and sensitivity specificity. As I already told you, in a machine learning technique, you are there the major parameters, find the two positive and two negative uh, that you have to consider, right? So always remember that there are two negatives and uh, two positive. Only the problem is that false positive is also very very uh, dangerous in a training and a testing phases. So total number of phases we considered here normal and uh, malignant and the total images we consider 25 images and the malignant find the 29. Similar total images in capital testing phases we consider the malignant equal to 20. So total image 100 images we can consider. Any doubt, please ask me regarding these questions. I think uh, you have uh, uh, any questions sufficient time with the questioner. You can ask me any questions, any doubt. So this is the my 11th number of FDP. So same topic I presented from different places. Hello. Ah, yes, tell me, yes. Uh, um, good afternoon, sir. Ah, yes, yes, tell me. Ah. Uh, sir, my question is regarding the neural network. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Tell me, huh? what is the question? I just want to ask uh, how we decide the weights in between the layers, input layers or uh, hidden layers and output layers in fully okay. networks. Okay, okay. So what we'll do, so always you remember, suppose uh, my voice is audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, so what we'll do, Suppose this is your uh, neural network, right? You just unmute. Some noise coming with just unmute and you can ask. Suppose this is your neural network. You are asking is how to uh, consider the hidden layer, right? Is it your question there? Sir, uh, my question is how we decide the weights for the input okay, parameters. Wait. Okay, input parameters. So what we'll do, first of all, suppose the uh, first of all you define is uh, how many hidden layer you have to fix. First of all you define, right? So remember the hidden layer must be D should be quite quite less than then M cross N plus one. That you have to think first. Now come to your weight. So what we'll do generally we are considering the weight is equal to suppose your M case is equal to 32 into 32. So you have to find out the 32 into 32 number of rows and column that must be a hidden layer from the 0 to 1. You make the rand function, make the rand function 0 to 1, then you allow to the neural network train and test like that, point 0.1. Then again you find out the rand function of minus 1 to 1. Again you, you use the same training and testing, right? So you can find out which of is output are very close to the loss function of x minus x set are very close to zero, that training function you have to consider. This is a, one of the golden principle I am just suggesting. There is no hard and fast rule that the training factor might be considered the 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 or like center. So we can do, you identify the train factor or the training or the weight vector the W factor, we can find out rand function from the zero. Generally, what I did, I'm just explaining you, right? I'm using the random factor from zero to one. Then again, I'm using the random factor from minus one to one. So in this case, what happened, the normal distribution you have to identify by being minus one to one. Generally, what happened, if your positive data you have to consider, suppose you in a high dimensional your image data, so better you consider minus one to one, you will find out very good result means there's a very good result in the sense you will be satisfied your result because as compared to the our analysis so how do you consider which result is better as a basis on the on basis of accuracy right suppose you using the some method xy method you got the accuracy 80 percent and you are using the z method you get the accuracy 90 method so obviously go for the z similarly so you are applying the random vector uh, using the weight matrix from the 0 to 1 and the minus 1 so you will identify which of these you get a good result that you can consider. Anything else? Okay, thank you, sir. Ah.
anything else any doubt no no sir clear sir thank you okay okay, okay. so i already shared uh, with this ppt and uh, one of the published paper i request to all the uh, uh, organizer please share with the participant and this is the my email id you can uh, any doubt you can ask me any point of time no problem so email id you can uh, note down you can ask uh, any point of time mm -hmm. any doubt any doubt can ask me no sir you can continue so today your validator function right your validator ceremony at i think at 2 o'clock or something like that 3 o'clock okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah hello uh, sir uh, no sir so it's at 4 o'clock actually 3 o'clock we have a quiz so 3 okay, o'clock quiz. Uh, okay. we have quiz uh, like uh, we will we'll, uh, we'll be giving you 45 minutes and 20 questions and uh, till 3:45 3 to 3:45 then after 15 minutes we'll uh, this, at 4 o'clock we'll have this validatory function 4 to 5 okay, okay. okay you enjoy the today puja you can enjoy the celebration puja and pray for the betterment of your quiz section okay yeah thank you sir thank you very much okay uh, madam Uh, so if if uh, no one have any questions so i think then we'll close the session anyone having any question 